Good morning, my name is Joanna Minot, and I was part of the 2021 virtual seminar. Um, so I am excited to finally be on the Yale campus. I, my seminar was led by um, Professor of Astronomy, Sabrani Basu, and even though it could have been heavily science-y, we had art and history and English teachers present, and we all contributed. And so I started to think, well, as I'm writing this curriculum unit, maybe I should try to allow my students to see themselves reflected in the content. Um, and so here is one of my star students, Bryant Tyler, um, and he will describe his ex experience. And I've been teaching this unit ever since 2021. Good morning. Good morning. When I was younger, I lived with my grandmother. At night, we would see so many stars. Being in the country with little to no light pollution, you could see the Big and Little Dipper, observe constellations, and get lost in the vastness of the night sky. Stars are synonymous with my grandmother because she is a huge part of my life. For this reason, I connected so well to this unit because it reminded me of a very special time from my childhood. But that is my story, my reason for being interested in Miss Mana's curriculum unit, Beyond the Rainbow, investigating the characteristics of stars. I attend Huguenot High, a multicultural and urban school in Richmond, Virginia. Miss Mana's astronomy unit takes the, time to op takes the opportunity to highlight the contributions of a variety of cultures connected to what we know about astronomy. The majority of students are African American and Hispanic Latino origin. She introduced us to the Mayan ruins of Chichen Itza, a World Heritage Site in Mexico. This archaeological ruin highlights the great Mayan civilization advanced understanding of astronomy. Mayan society tracked the movements of the sun to know when to harvest and sow. Several Mayan architectural structures were used as astronomical instruments, including the Pyramid of Kukulkan. The Pyramid of Kukulkan gives a 360-degree view of the skies as it rises above the canopy of the Yucatan Peninsula rainforest, as seen above in the TV in front of you. Each of the pyramid's four sides has 91 steps, with one additional step on top. Together, these steps total 365, the same number of days in a calendar year. El Caracol is the Mayans' dome-shaped observatory from which they tracked the motion of Venus, predicted eclipses, and created the Mayan calendar, the Hab. Other sites that also pay homage to the sun include Machu Picchu, the St Stonehenge, and the pyramids of Egypt. What's so cool about Ms. Mayan's class is how she blends science, culture, and history together. When you sit in her class, there will always be something you can take away and relate to. I like that there is a. I like that there is, improve, is room to incorporate culture and science. We explore various folklore identities such as Helios, Ra, Apollo, and Surya. From the astrological science to the hard science, she teaches us in a way that touches all types of learners. In this unit, students will see beyond the rainbow and enter the world of spectroscopy, which is a technique used by astronomers to determine the characteristics of stars, such as chemical composition, color, and temperature relative motion, and size and luminosity. We all know this one. You're at a stoplight. You hear the science of a fire truck. Which way is it coming from? Both light and sound are considered waves. Considering the colors of visible light, you know them, Roy G. Bibb. The R tending towards the red side, and the Bibb tending towards the blue side. Well, this is very significant. The Doppler effect describes the phenomenon of waves bunching up as they approach you, giving off a higher pitch and a lower pitch as it goes away from you. If that's the case, you can proceed through the traffic light. In regards to light, the spectrum shifts towards the red if it is moving away, and it shifts towards the blue if it is coming towards you. This is called red shift and blue shift. This is the case for all objects. Did you know that people are hired to watch if objects such as asteroids are coming towards us? That means they are in blue shift. Did you know that every element has a unique emission spectrum? I bet you haven't seen a periodic table like this, as seen below in the t as seen above in the TV. As unique as a snowflake, emission spectral lines are used to determine composition of stars and other cosmic material, first by hand and then by an online simulation. This method is called spectroscopy. 
Spectroscopy is a technique used by astronomers to determine the characteristics of stars. And to find the characteristics of stars, you have to match the lines to the original point of the star. We learn to categorize stars by reading and interpreting graphs. It also challenged the colors we associate with hot and cold. It turns out the hottest stars are not in fact red, but white and blue. I never knew they could be blue because in media they're shown as red or yellow. With today's advanced technology, we can observe our universe in an awe-inspiring way, since our eyes can only see invisible light. We perceive the sun as a yellowish-orange disk in the sky. However, with NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory, or SDO for short, studies the sun at multiple wavelengths, including extreme ultraviolet light and x-rays. One of the instruments is the Atmospheric Imaging Assembly, or the AIA for short which uses four telescopes to capture eight images of the sun every 12 seconds in different wavelength bands. As shown in the video, you can see enhanced images of solar flares, coronal loops, and sunspots. In conclusion, I want to give a heartfelt thank you to the Yale National In Initiative for the opportunity to represent my school at the 2023 annual conference. My family and Ms. Mina for inspiring me to reach for the stars and always being there for me when I need a helping hand. In the future, I would like to be a news journalist. No matter what my future holds, I know that my granny will be my true star, and I also want to thank somebody who's in the audience today, my father, for all of his guidance and his support. Thank you for being here today, and I truly appreciate you. I love you.